going to introduce our speaker now, and then giving him a little extra time so that he, if he has any uh, anything, um, people can ask questions and discuss. Usually we don't have time, <laughs> so. Today we're very happy to have Marcus Dupree. Topic, Understanding the Chakras. A journey through the chakras and what they really mean. Marcus is a life change consultant. He is a lecturer, workshop leader, radio host, so, radio show host. <laughs> and interview the translator of the book, The Art of Listening to Life, and the designer of a relaxation app for smartphones called Relaxation One. Marcus spends his time helping people find the message encapsulated in setbacks, symptoms, and disease. His roots are in a system called the secret code of the body and medicine of the soul, as well as the science of yoga. He has published many articles and is currently working on his book, I Breathe, Therefore I Am. His work takes him all over the world but his home base is here in Nelson. And um, he sent the following to just describe and explain his talk. The new phase of my journey started seven years ago when I started assisting with workshops <clears throat> called The Art of Listening to Life. It has been an intense and fruitful journey forwards, being able to identify the message contained in setbacks, symptoms, pain, and disease, and applying steps of integration, which ultimately result in healing. My job as a self-empowerment specialist is to inspire people by identifying their strengths and help them back into the driver's seat of their life. I help people understand what you are the creator of your reality really means. Welcome again, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. <clears throat> so, is this microphone going to work like this? Yeah, it's good. Good. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, for some of you, it's, uh, you've seen several of the talks, so you'll be familiar with some of it. Uh, the Art of Listening to Life, which is the book uh, that I translated, and a lot of the information that I, that I share is, is in here. And then the other source is the science of yoga. That's the, the, other, the other source of information that I use and combine into the journey that I can take people through in our workshops and, and, and the work that I do. Um, so this winter, um, some of you might have heard I, I did a big trip. I went and studied in a place called Pyramid Yoga in Thailand, which was very difficult. Um, you know, all those beaches and all that beautiful sand. It was, it was hard. I, I worked really hard at not going to the beach every day and focusing on, on the science of yoga, in fact, the, the chakras. I mean, yoga has been part of my life, um, all my life. I was very fortunate to have it introduced in my family. My mother taught yoga in like 1975 in uh, college uh, evening yoga classes, you know, so 
one of the first. And um, so having been exposed to it and just part of it, I studied in India, I lived in ashrams, and I had to take time out from the spiritual journey to just take part in normal life. Have a child, a business, and family, and all those things, because when I was in the ashrams, when I was 20 years old, uh, the conclusion was that none of this is very important. <laughs> And that moving on and, and, and elevating to a spiritual level was a wonderful thing. But at 20 years of age, uh, I wasn't ready for the cave. <laughs> I didn't want to become a monk and just do that. So I just got into it and got into all the challenges that life represent. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> went through it all. And it's an important learning experience, all of it. So. Now I've returned to it, like uh, Anne mentioned in the intro, I've been in this now for seven years of dedication, of just working the art of listening to life, and what it really means, and how it works. So one of the things that we, we have to deal with is we have a lot of general statements, a lot of fluffy statements about the law of attraction, and following your dreams, and creating your own reality, and all that. And we really are at a stage now where we need the techniques and the information for moving forward and moving into it. How do you do it? Well, it's, you know, it's nice. We are the creator of our reality, but how do we actually apply it? How do we actually work with it? And it turns out that studying the chakras has... I've studied the chakras all my life. It's just that this winter phase, which was two months of intense study, was going to a deeper level, and I didn't realize how much information it would actually reveal for how it is that we create our reality. It turns out that it's actually quite a neat map and a neat architecture to follow for creating your reality, the general statement. So, going into the chakras, the chakras are wheels of energy, and so they are a, essentially an architecture, a map system that starts at the base of our body and flows upward. So it's a column, la columna, shoshumna is the Hindi word, the Sanskrit word, which is very similar to the Spanish word, which is columna, which is the column, the column of energy. And in this column of energy, there's all these centers that are representative of something. One of the biggest issues with the Western mind and trying to understand things is that we want to describe everything to the T. We need these descriptions that come from the rational mind that just get really tough, you know? Like sometimes, one discussion is where is the second chakra? I mean, people argue about it. <laughs> it's at the belly button. No, it's below the belly button. No, it's above the belly button. <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> That's what we really want to talk about, right? Not where it is exactly positioned, because if you think about it, some people's belly buttons are quite high, and some are quite low. <laughs> anyway, so in this investigation uh, of the chakras, um, we, we're going to go beyond just the basic ideas. Now, Statements like you're the creator of your reality, that's the big one that I'm going to address today and talk about a lot and relate to, to the chakras. Now, short statements like Proverbs like that are beautiful, right? In fact, my relaxation app, Relaxation One, has over a hundred Proverbs in it because they are the seeds of thought. They are the beautiful thing that gets you going and say, oh, I love that idea and concept. If you want to take it further, you can't stay with the proverb. The proverb is is insufficient. It's just the beginning. So that's what these statements are like. So as we go deeper into this, we start to connect to the greater being that we are. We have to connect to something greater than ourselves. And the chakra system is a way of doing that. The chakra system is a way of actually channeling energy into creating the life that we have. The channeling energy into the body that we have, the energy that we need to create what we have. 
So the first chakra, chakra one, Munadara. Munadara is the first chakra, the element is earth. It's fundamental. We're talking survival, shelter, food, all the basics that are necessary. Everything from the material world. So everything that is necessary in the physical realm, right down to the subatomic structures to put together to create this world that we live in, this world that we have. This microphone that I speak through. Anything has come from the imagination. We're going to talk about that process, but everything is created from that earth beat, that earth level, that dimension of the matter and of the physical. And it's really good to try to connect to that chakra. There's a couple of ways of doing it. One of the ways that I really like is to take your shoes off and get on grass. That is such a good feeling, you know, just standing barefoot on grass. The other one is to stand on the beach. We're very fortunate in the Kootenays. Almost anywhere we are, we can find beach sand. That's an amazing thing, really. And you just, you just nestle your feet into the sand and feel the coolness of the earth and connect. That's a really good way. So grass, you can even go into your garden and step on your carrots. Just get in there and, and <laughs> right into that earth, that soil, and feel that connection. It's amazing what the physical connection can do for what's going on inside us. Because an adventure of the soul, one of the things that we repeat and repeat and talk about is that what's going on inside is going on outside. What you're seeing out here is actually happening inside as well. So that connection to the earth is a way of connecting with the root chakra, with that first one which is the material, the material world, earth. The second chakra is Swavistana. Swavistana, the second chakra, is, as discussed, somewhere around here. <laughs> and its element is water. Water represents so much, right? Flow, flexibility, connectivity, connection. It's where the actual desire to create something exists. It's where our desire to connect with others actually exists. It's the second chakra that drives us to actually come to this meeting here today. Our need to connect with others. Our need to create something. Our need to be noticed. <laughs> Good timing. <coughs> that, that was impressive. <laughs> anyway, sorry guys, somebody oh walked God. by the window outside. Oh. It, it synchronized with what you were saying. And it was very much in line <laughs> with what I was saying at the moment. So. <laughs> it had to be on this side of the room again. So, Swavistana, so you know, um, connection to others. I mean, Krishnamurti said that we were not safe in isolation. And I remember the first time I heard those words, I thought, oh, that's a weird way to say it. You know? But we're not safe in isolation speaks to that whole need to connect to others and to be involved. So the second chakra is connected to the senses, all our senses, touch, smell, taste, all those feels. That connection to the second chakra is what keeps us addicted to the physical world to what we love here. And it's important to be in contact with it. But again, there's seven chakras. So we gotta get into all of them and balance them all because if we're just rooted in one, if we're just in that second chakra and just enjoying, you know, just contact and sexuality and all those sorts of things, well then it's an imbalance. And there can be a block there. But that connection, the second chakra, is where we're connected to others. It's the chakra of duality. It's the chakra of, of everything that has to do with interaction and the desire to create. So then we move up to Manipura. Manipura is the third chakra, solar plexus. That is basically the action chakra. 
It's the action chakra, it's the, actra, the chakra of transformation. Where things get done, things get made. And what's the element? Transformation is fire. fire. Element of the third chakra is fire. So transformation, so if you look at wood, cellulose and fiber, fire converts it into energy, vapor, and ether. That's transformation. That's from solid, from root chakra, from matter, to ether, to energy. That transformational metaphor is what the third chakra is about. And that's about creating. It's action chakra. It's doing it, getting it done. We're, we're driven by that third chakra to actually make it. <clears throat> actually, we're driven to do it by the second chakra. <laughs> and the third one is where we actually pull the elements together to create the thing that we're creating. So the third chakra is, um, is key to getting things done. It's where we create the world in which we live and the world in which we operate. So the next chakra is under the microphone. <laughs> It's the heart chakra. <laughs> and the heart chakra is the middle chakra. We have three below and we have three above. It's that center point where we go from the material world, what it is that we're creating, the reality that we're creating in a physical form, how we create it and all of that, to the upper chakras, which are not physical, which are not material. This is the chakra of evaluation. This is where we decide what we want, where we decide what we don't want. It's where our intuition resides. This is where we actually make our choices. A lot of people live in the illusion that choices are made in the brain. Little choices, like, <clears throat> I want to take another sip of my coffee. That's brain. But when it comes to big decisions, that's heart, and that's anahata. So here, this is where the evaluation happens. This is the heart chakra. It's the center of our toroidal field. We have this field of energy. It goes out, around, and in. That's why we feel the presence of someone. We have your eyes closed, and you feel that someone just walked in, or someone's beside you. Those toroidal fields, that energy that we are, the, touches. Is there an element? The element, we love the elements, air. So we go from earth to water, fire to air. So air, of course, there we go with the heart, center, toroidal field. It's where the air actually passes. It surrounds the lungs, you know, or the lungs surround. It's all part of that chakra, as well as the heart. It's where we have connection to everyone and to everything. That connection is a connection of love, but it's universal love. It's the collective mind, the collective soul, the collective everything, the God concept, whatever we want to call it, but that which is greater than ourselves. There's a lot of confusion with these two loves. There's a love of the second chakra, which is this connection to other, to recognition, exchange, and all of that stuff. And then there's universal love, which is what this chakra is about, right? So the bigger, wider connection to what we are. So the heart chakra is extremely important. It's that middle point. Now we move up to the fifth chakra, referred to as the throat chakra sometimes. Element is sound. And it is, it's sort of called the bottleneck of the chakras. <laughs> because a lot of people are blocked right here. This is where you have expressions like, I was choked up, or I had a lump in my throat. I didn't know what to say, I couldn't, you know. We have all kinds of expressions that talk about being blocked up there. Not being able to express 
what needs to be expressed. The fifth chakra is where what is inside your head, in your mind, and in your heart comes out into the physical world. It's where you share it with others. It's where it actually takes shape out here. We like to think that we know what people are thinking, but we don't. Until it's released, it comes from the inside out. And this is where it happens. The fifth chakra is the chakra of expression, of getting it out and sharing it with others. It's unbelievable what happens in this chakra. I mean, even discomfort, you bump into something, what do you do? Ugh! You know, right away, there's just an instinctual release of that energy. It's a release point that gets blocked up for a lot of people, and when we contain that, when we contain that energy, well then, we can go into some of my other lectures and some of the other stuff we talk about, which is the repression of energy, the repression of emotion, the repression of stuff that's not being let out. But this is an incredible release point for that. Because until we release it, until it comes out, it's stirring around inside. Very important the fifth chakra. Well, they're all important. So, sound. That's why we like to sing. You know, sing. Uh, it's the vocal cords, the vibration, the frequency, the release of that beautiful melody and music. That is all part of that expression chakra. Extremely important. So from there we move up to Ajna which is the sixth chakra. The sixth chakra is also known as the third eye, resides the pineal gland. Some say it's the seat of the soul. Don't know about that. In fact, there's an, uh, I just read an article that was talking about the fact that um, a radio plays music and you hear voices in the radio. Yeah, but. There's nobody in the radio. <laughs> it's like the TV. You see people on the TV, there's nobody in the TV. It comes from another place. So this new idea that the soul is actually even outside of us is a very interesting concept that's being batted around. And as I mentioned before, rational mind, I think it's important not to lock into concepts and ideas in too rigid a way, which is a great thing about your group here is fantastic. The Unitarian Spiritual Center, just the openness to ideas and concepts and entertaining new ideas and incorporating it because ultimately we don't understand anything until we understand it from here. You have to understand it from your own perspective. Other people explain it, we talk about it, but that's still just a whole bunch of guidelines for a person to actually put the pieces together, digest it, and assimilate that information to a point where it becomes part of them. And that's how we understand it. everything. Not just some things, everything. So, the sixth chakra element is light. I didn't use vibration and frequency with sound because they're both versions of sound and frequency. Sorry, frequency and vibration. This is where things take shape. This is where we get our first images. This is where the first place that we actually have a vision of something. The imagination, image, the nation. It's the imagination that gives shape and we have the light vision of something. It's a very important um, chakra as well in terms of connecting to our higher self so I'm going to go to the next one, which is the is, uh, Sahasrara. It's a tough word. Sahasrara. That's the crown chakra. So the crown chakra, I'd just like to point out, by the way, that the chakras, we know them as wheels, wheels of energy. Right? They're wheels. But they're not this way. They're this way. Okay? The wheels are actually spinning. This way, not this way. And it's a column. It's a, an actual pillar with a 
root chakra at the bottom and now the crown chakra at the top. Now the crown chakra is our contact point. Contact point to source, to universal mind, to the quantum field, to the God concept. This is where inspiration comes from and it's where it enters our system, where it enters our body. So you've got inspiration, you got inspiration enters, it hits the first chakra, and now you have your first vision of it. You see it. But, oh, I've got an image. I've got an idea. I've got something to work with here. And then as it comes down, it comes to a place where you express it, where you describe it, where you start explaining what it is that you are inspired by, what you saw, what you're seeing. And it's not about order, but it also gets evaluated by the heart chakra. So all of a sudden now it gets here, and now it's the evaluation of, is this something worthy? Is this something that serves me and serves others? Is this something that's worth pursuing? Is this something I really want to do? This is where the heart makes the decision. It's not the brain. And so this process of inspiration, vision, expression, evaluation, now moves down to the fire. It moves down to the action chakra. This is where you decide to actually put this thing together. You want to do this. You want to bring it into your life, into your physical reality. So from there, it goes down and we have to maintain the will to do it, the desire to do it. The contact with the people that we need to get it done because we can't do these things by ourselves. It's all about interaction. We have to do it with others. So maintaining the desire to do it and the will to do it and the connection to others, that's down in the second chakra. And then of course we reach into the root chakra, which is where all the material comes from to create this thing that we want to create. So the whole column, all the way up, from inspiration to vision, expression, evaluation, the doing, maintaining the actual desire to do, and then creation, is what that chakra map is all about. It's an architecture of how it all works. To get hung up on studying a specific chakra for a long period of time is an exercise that can be worthy if that's where a person is at in terms of trying to fit this information or work particular chakras. Like, like the blocked throat chakra that is very common with a lot of people. Not being able to let out and express your truth. Now expressing your truth is not expressing your political opinion. It's not what you think about Donald Trump. And this is where we get confused again, because why? Well, when we think we're expressing our truth, but the truth is related to some mental construct, some belief system, some paradigm, well then that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about expressing a truth, we're talking about a deeper truth, a higher truth, deeper, higher, you know, it's almost a contradiction, but it's the same thing. And so, going and looking for that, how do we do that? Well. The only way to start is with quieting the mind. So, meditation, breathing techniques, calming the mind, trying to stop the internal noise from rattling around inside our heads. That's the first thing. So the reason I developed Relaxation One, the relaxation app, with music and sound and, and uh, breathing techniques and all of that is because I often get asked, how do you get started? Well, the first thing is to quiet the mind. You have to stop the noise. Because the noise are ideas that are just rattling around inside the head that actually don't achieve anything. It just goes round and round and round. It's like thinking someone did something because for a certain reason, and you think it for a whole week, and then you meet the person, it turns out that's not why they did it. You spent a whole week worrying about it, spent a whole week working it up, Oh, getting upset about it, probably put a hole in your stomach, 
We already know that holes in the stomach are ulcers, which are created by stress, right? Mm -hmm. So, is there such thing as an ulcer disease? No, there isn't. So, how, how do you quiet your mind? What would you say? The first technique and best technique is do some breathing techniques. Just breathe. Right. Follow the breath okay. in, follow the breath out. It's the first way. And as soon as you notice thoughts coming in, especially those niggly little thoughts, those repeating thoughts that have no purpose, you just take a deeper breath and focus on the breath. It's the original mantra. It's the original mantra. Before we use mantras and vowels and words and syllables and Sanskrit words and all these words to meditate by, before that there was the breath, right? You see in the beginning there was the word, but maybe it's the breath. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's vibration, that's for sure. So that's the... <clears throat> The basic structure of that, that chakra system and connecting to it, um, I have, a, I have a, a 10 minute practice, a 10 minute meditation that we could do at the end, but I just wondered if you guys have any comments or questions so that we can speak to certain So the things. chakras are invisible wheels that are in, in our body. And uh, so it's up to us to keep them going. Keep them they, spinning. Keep, they keep spinning. <laughs> well, um, wheels of energy is the actual translation of mm -hmm. chakras, right? From from mm -hmm. Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're not concrete physical things. The most concrete we get to is. The pineal gland, for instance, that some people like to, to think about as the sixth chakra. Mm -hmm. But um, in meditation, you can actually tune into a certain feeling of energy in certain parts of your body, for sure. Mm -hmm. So if you want to actually meditate on the root chakra, um, one of the best ways is to find some way to connect with the earth while you're doing your meditation. The first thing I talked about was connecting to grass, to earth, to sand. Mm -hmm. That would be a good way to actually connect to the root chakra and do a meditation that connects you to the earth. Mm -hmm. Right? So, mm -hmm. I had a fellow come up to me one time and say, your chakra is spinning backwards. <laughs> so he went like this and got it going the right way. Oh yeah. What does that imply? Well, uh, he might have been on certain medications. <laughs> I wondered. But uh, <laughs> so, what's the what's what is it about it spinning, and is there a direction? Well, there's yeah. The whole direction thing is getting into the whole rational mind part of it, right? The fact is that. Um, if it's if it's spinning, I think it spins different on different you know, on, on the southern hemisphere and the north hemisphere. <laughs> like water, <laughs> just like water. That's right. I just read Shirley MacLaine, and, of course, <laughs> and she said it doesn't matter. It doesn't exactly. That's where I'm headed. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. You know. <laughs> no, no, good, good. I I, did, I couldn't quote Shirley MacLaine so good. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's an amazing. Uh, experience that we realize that a lot of diseases come from the sort of lack of flow in a certain chakra and then the disease or the uh, whatever ailment we have often can relate to a chakra for example like uh, something blocked here could be like thyroid or cancer Hashimoto's or something like that but I it's amazing that whatever our condition is that's blocked physically mm -hmm. can also definitely relate to an energy center where we're not uh, healthy yeah. Yeah. And um, so in Adventure of the Soul, in, in the art of listening to life and the, the stuff that I mainly do, right, um, what we do is we look for that specific thing. But the way that we do it is we actually ask the person where they're feeling it in their body. 
where are you feeling in your, what is your body telling you? And then a person will say, well, I have, you know, some gastritis or something. I don't want to know the word. It's not about the word. I want to know where you're feeling it and how you're feeling it. So that, I'm still answering that question, so I'll just finish that. So essentially, trying to figure out which chakra it's in is a little bit too like going to what's the name of the disease. Because now you get hooked into, oh, it's actually here, it's residing here, and it's stuck here, and this is where I'm stuck, and so on. Whereas in the art of listening to life, what we do is we actually go for what are you actually feeling, reconnecting to the body, and now reverse engineering why the condition is there. And um, so again, util utilizing the architecture of the chakras is great to sort of get an idea of where it is. I don't know who can take it to the nth level of just working with the chakras in terms of doing the whole work. There are people who can. David Goulet, who has pyramid yoga in Thailand, is a person that can do that. Because why? Well, because he spent 50 years in doing nothing more than deepening his knowledge in yoga and in that specific way of seeing it. But in terms of what we have access to, unless one goes and studies even deeper, because I've put a lot of time into studying that, and I'm still at the surface <laughs> of, of the actual understanding of how it all works. So we actually go for what it is that you're feeling in terms of solving uh, any type of condition that's going on in the body. Um, we use numerology, we use the chakras, we use these uh, modalities to get an indication of where more or less we need to go. And then we leave that. We leave the modality. Because the modalities are all entrance points. That's what they are. They're just an entrance point. doesn't matter which one you're talking about. The Reiki, the, any of the modalities, the healing modalities, are entrance points to connecting to your own body and figuring out what's going on in yourself. Because you are completely unique. It's an amazing thing how we can all be the same and all be so unique at the same time. But when it comes to figuring out what's going wrong in a person, when, whenever they have any type of condition, any type of symptom, any type of disease that's going on in the body, it is amazing how custom our approach is to that individual. We use the modalities to get an indicator as to where we're headed, and then after that, it becomes the individual. Very interesting stuff. You ever heard of Tony? Where yeah. you use sound, you place the sound in the chakra. Right. Yes. And the frequencies. Moving, the sound will move yeah. the energy out of your body, and you feel the energy, you feel a difference right away. Yes. Well, um, that's because we are vibrational beings, and yes, each chakra has a frequency that is associated with it, and. We can vibrate anything and change it. Have you seen cymatics? Have you seen what they do with cymatics where they'll put sand on a speaker and you just find a frequency and a, a mandala will form. Sand will actually shape into a mandala. Water as well, they put it into, oh yeah, the cymatics. You know, that would be a fun thing to do one day. All we gotta do is take one of those speakers, put it on the floor, and put a pizza tray with salt or sand. Salt is nice, works really well. And the cymatics in water are tremendous. And the other thing about it is that when you find the frequency, a frequency, and then you stray from it, you go up, the mandala disappears. And you come back to the frequency, the exact same mandala reshapes in the sand, in the salt, in the water. So we can do it with anything, and those toning, for the, the chakra toning, it's the same sort of thing. You're trying to find the frequency, more or less, of what's going on in that zone. And by getting the right frequency, you will actually vibrate out what doesn't... Because body, mind, uh, always tries to find balance. It always tries to find equilibrium. So if you shake it up, you give it the opportunity to find center again. And that's how the stuff that's not supposed to be there gets out, and the stuff that's supposed to be there stays. Right. 
That's what toning is. It's a frequency thing. And we're vibrational beings, so this operates on all levels. We can do all kinds. We, I, I can't remember. I remember how excited I got about how they get rid of kidney stones now. I mean, kidney stones, they get rid of by putting an apparatus, actually do it in water, because water carries the frequency better. And they actually send a subatomic frequency that busts the stones into powder. So you imagine we're transforming a stone in your kidney to powder, and you just pass it. What kind of an instrument are you using? They're like um, a little mini bath, but it's a sonic uh, you know, treatment. But a that's mini. how they remove kidney stones now. A mini what? It's a sonic bath. What is that? Sound bath. Where do you get that? At the hospital. <laughs> it's how they remove stones, Katrina. Think about how they remove stones. Don't worry about what you're stepping into. Just, they're using sound to break the stones into powder. And when you use a specific frequency, when you use the right frequency for something like that, the amazing thing, it doesn't affect the kidney. It doesn't affect the soft tissue. It just breaks the stone into powder. All with these. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, are you familiar with the, the uh, examination they did in, in the pyramids in the king's chamber, where they found the frequency of the of the hall, and and they put a rubber sheet over the grave, and and put that frequency into it, and uh, the sound pattern was the ankh that came up. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's coming up with the pyramids and frequency, right? Yeah. What do you, cymatics. What do you know? The cymatics, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That, that, what I just described, the cymatic process of sand in it? In the Egyptian thing. That, that's what the pyramid, you know, was reflecting back by whatever frequency they were putting out, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you know about ringing in the ears? Ringing in the ears. Tinnitus. Um, answer the call. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a good one. Um, there's, there's a message contained in any symptom, anything that's going on. Right? Tell me the message. Well, <laughs> have you noticed Individual. it come and go? That's right. It's yeah, yeah. So you notice that it goes. Yeah. Right? So, what you should do is, you can get, no, I was going to say get my app, that'll be complicated. So, let's just do some deep breathing, right? Do your meditation and your breathing, and try to notice what's going on in your life, the circumstances that are going on, the last conversation you had, last conversation you had, with who, what it was about, and who it was with, you know, all the everything that surrounds it, when you notice that the sound either leaves or when it arrives. And you have to do this several times until you get to a point where you realize what is generating the tension that for you is ringing in your ears. But can the last whatever happened have been so happy and fantastic that the ringing in the ear comes or does it have to be negative? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to charge the answer either way. But it, it should, you should Some be able to emotion. recognize. You should be able to recognize what's okay. The first thing you have to notice is when you hear it, yeah, yeah. and when you don't hear it. Yeah. Then you go start looking for the conditions where in your life it's happening. When you do hear it, and when you don't hear it, and that's where you start making the comparison and looking for the common bond, looking for what it is. Because the one thing about tonight is, is that for most people, the people will say a lot that it's always there, but it's not. There are times that it stops. You need to start tuning into the moments that it's not and look at the conditions of your situation, what's going on in your life. And that's the beginning steps that I can give you for dealing with tinnitus. But it's not a condition that exists for no reason. No, I'm sure. When doctors just say, well, you know, you got it. 
We don't have a drug for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> and they say, well, guess what? <clears throat> What's generating it? Why is the body generating an imbalance? Why is the body generating a symptom? Why is the body generating a condition? It's always the question that we go back to. But uh, we're getting into uh, adventure of the soul there. But uh, can't relate that to chakras. <laughs> yes? Okay, I didn't know that chakras moved on wheels, and so I'm wondering, does that have to do with what you said, that there's an energy form around our body, was it called toroidal, what's it, is that, is that what it's called? A field of energy, a yeah. tor uh, yes, a toroidal sh shape is just out the top, around, and then back in the body. It's, it's the actual field of the earth, right? So does it, it goes something like, what's it? Uh, if you look at the torus, it goes in and spirals in. Right. So it comes through spiraling and then down and then out. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Everybody looks like now. So yeah. The, the chakras, I mean, does it act, do they mimic that shape? Of, like, on, they're, they're part of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're part of that energetic flow. Yeah. Okay. It's all part of it. So Anahata, the fourth chakra, chakra of the heart, is the center of that toroidal field. Okay. And thanks for pointing out the spiral nature of that movement, because that's what happens, is it basically gets into it. The spiral. And I got one more, like, I, I, but they're not on wheels, they yes, are wheels. Wheel, okay. It, it's a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought meridians in Chinese medicine go up and down. Are they, yes. are, are, that, are they just different world views, or are they connected like that? Well, it's the same, really. Um, it's just different ways of describing the same thing, but the Chinese tend to take the meridians down through the limbs and, and down through the system. Well, when you get into the science of yoga, you'll find all that stuff too. Like there's all kinds of levels of description, right? So if you're going to take the meridians themselves, it's, it's not a total match to the chakra system, no. Parts of it will cross over. You, if you want to explain all the, the Chinese approach to meridians and all of that, you would have to go deeper into the science of yoga. Yeah. So, any other questions on chakras or on anything? Really? I'm <laughs> open. <laughs> Do they relate to auras and colors then? The auras and colors will be more related to, um, to the toroidal field that we're talking about, right? Some people can actually see that, right? They can see uh, energy around people. And it takes on different colors based on what you're experiencing, maybe the mood or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, other your, other signs. Is your experience with your Eastern um, presence there, you know, going over there and talking to people, have, have you have people there so that they see, they see yeah, these you. auras? Or like, it's reputable um, right. per persons who do they kind of have um, the ability to see auras. Yeah, yeah, there are people who, who claim to. Um, and I, I mean, even myself, I've had experiences where I've seen it, mm -hmm. but it, it took a hallucinogenic uh, drug to yeah. do it. Um, so I, I, for instance, experienced it with peyote. Mm -hmm. I did a... Um, I did a guided uh, peyote journey years ago with the shaman, and I saw yellow light around everything. It was, uh, it was an amazing thing to see. In fact, you know, one of the most, I'm going to tell it to you because it was a funny story. Um, there was a bumblebee, a big bumblebee, a tropical bumblebee. <laughs> uh, the thing was bigger than a big marble, and, and then wings on top of that. It was huge, right? And I could see its aura. I could see all the light around it. So it ended up being about the size of a grapefruit with this thing flying in the middle. And, I, and there it was. It was flying. And then all the plants had an aura. So there was this yellow light that was surrounding all the plants and everything that was alive. And this bumblebee is flying along. And it's going bling, 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 bling. You know how they fly like that? They're always trying to find something. And I could see the yellow light bumping together. What was bumping together was actually their auras. 
So the actual bumblebee was utilizing its aura and sensing the aura of the plants. And then when it found a flower that it wanted to go into, it penetrated and went into the center of the flower. It did what it had to do, come out and start bang, 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 just bouncing along the energy, energy field. So, so there are people, getting back to your original question, there are people who can see that on a more constant basis. What happens is when a person lives in that sensitivity all the time, it's a pretty overwhelming place to live. It's an overwhelming place to be because you're just sensing too much, you're seeing too much. It's just a lot of people who have that kind of sensitivity on a full-time basis, they got a lot of issues because they can't deal with this life. It's like it's just too complicated, right? And there are different conditions. Um, I, I, I'm not sure which one they are, but there's there's some conditions where we have people who are not in full control of their mental capabilities, and one of their problems is too much information is coming in. Does it's that just show too much information? Does that show all we are is energy? No, it shows an aspect of of our energetic being, right? Yeah. But we are. We're just energy. But often people who are in that sensitive spectrum, we put them we put them in the Asperger or it's called the autistic spectrum. Yeah. So people that we probably know together who are more, say, yeah. autistic can often see these sensitive lights and yeah. are more aware and they get overwhelmed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you bring up autism and, and that is one of those where it's just a sensitivity that's just dialed right up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like Okay, well, can you do some of the basic stuff? Can you do the dishes? No, I can't. <laughs> There's too much going on. I cannot do the dishes. Or if I do the dishes, it's going to be interesting. What's autism? What is autism? I think you can ask him later. It's a disease. We'll ask you later. Yeah. Ask him we'll talk about it. Yes. Other time. <laughs> no, I'd like so. to thank Marcus very much for coming. And we really, really got us thinking and giving us lots of ideas and thoughts to consider and maybe studying more, more about it on our own. Thank you for coming. And, <laughs> okay. and uh, I'd like to um, thank everyone who has made a donation in our, to our basket. And, uh, this is, uh, uh, as we call it, kind of a love offering to help us in our pay our expenses. And, and uh, so thank you, everyone. And so now we will extinguish the, the flame and the uh, little one. And, um, <laughs> okay, thanks Marcus. That was that, thanks. It was awesome. Yeah. We'll conclude. Thank you. No, we just we just have a couple few announcements. Um Morag Reed sent the following. No, 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 sorry, I'll use that one. <laughs> hey, I <clears throat> I just want to do a little more of a conclusion. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you for, for having me. I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, the relaxation app. You can just grab a card if you want to investigate that and see how it can work for you. Um, there's the book as well. I have a few books. But I also want to let, I'll let you know that I will be doing workshops in the next little while. And so if you're interested, you can also leave me your email if you want to get some updates and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So again, thanks for having me and you know, leave me your email if you want more contact and there's stuff here if you want to talk. The workshops? Yeah, like yeah. Talk. It'll be full day. Full days. Okay. A full day workshop. Yeah. Okay. Probably Saturdays. Okay. But. So one day Saturday workshop. It'll it would be there's full day workshops and also just um, I do a lot of consultations one on one for anyone who'd be interested in doing a one on one consultation 
and really drilling into what's going on, that's something that I do now a lot. Mm -hmm. Like this winter mm -hmm. was, you know, just a whole line of consultations mm -hmm. and drilling into the specific thing that's going on in someone's life. So just want to let you know that I do that. So you can leave me your email, you can take a card for contact and all of that sort of thing. So anything that you want to, if you want to go deeper with any of it, just know that uh, yeah. we can do that. Okay. If your shockers are spinning Thank backwards you. or sideways. We'll, <laughs> we'll get them spinning right. Yes. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. You know, we'll see you at the potluck. <laughs> and you speak to... Oh, yeah.